Hey beautiful people, what is up and welcome back to my channel. I am Jamila and I love all things beauty. I love all things makeup, I love all things skincare, and I especially love finding high-end and luxury beauty products at bargain prices. You guys already know here on my channel, I love sharing my tips and tricks for how to find really expensive makeup and skincare at the best prices. So if that sounds like something that you are interested in, please go ahead and click that subscribe button and join the family. So for today's video, I'm going to be sharing my raw first impressions thoughts on the new Nomad Cosmetics Haunted Europe palette. Nomad Cosmetics is a brand that I would say that I am still new to. It's a relatively new brand to me. I only have, well, no, two palettes of theirs. The first palettes I purchased of theirs was the Nomad Cosmetics America's Parks palette. And I want to give you guys a little bit of, you know, a little, a, a quick little story about my experience with the brand. Now, Nomad Cosmetics is an indie brand. It was founded by two, a, a couple that loves to travel and um, they've sort of dedicated their palettes around sort of this theme of travel. Now, I didn't know anything about the brand until they released the America's Pox palette and I saw, you know, creators like Yadi Beauty and Steven promoting it. I, those are creators that I trust and they were saying that this is an amazing product. And when I was trying to find swatches of the palette on Depot Complexions, I honestly couldn't find it. Like, and that left a little bit of a bad taste in my mouth of, about the brand on like initial look. And I actually reached out to the Instagram page. I reached out to the brand itself and said, hey, like, I, are you guys going to put up pictures with Depot Complexions? No, the, the palette had already launched. And I thought that it was such bad form to launch a palette without having content that showed how the palette looked on deeper complexions. And I told them that. I was like, you know, people rely on swatches, especially people of deeper complexions, to figure out if they want to make a purchase because they need to know if it's gonna work on their skin tone or not. And I will say that the way in which the brand responded to my concern about there not being deeper swatches available really left a good taste in my mouth. I thought that they were really gracious in accepting my feedback and accepting my complaints about there being no swatches available. They actually went on to create a highlight on their Instagram page with creators who they had either sent PR or who had purchased the palette on their own and had done swatches on their Instagram page so it was easily accessible. And they also went on to explain that, you know, with COVID, all of the photo shoots that they had planned for, for their palettes, um, they weren't able to do it so they weren't able to put the swatches up but that they realized that it was, you know, it's not great to put out a product where people of deeper complexions can't see themselves represented or, or can't see swatches so that they can decide if they want to purchase or not and I was really you know I was really happy with the way in which they responded and the way that in which they acknowledge where they were at fault um, and and the changes that they made to rectify that now you guys know that I am I have no issue saying when these larger brands are not being inclusive in the way in which they market or promote or create their products and I will do the same for indie brands. I'm just going to say that off, off the bat. Now, I fully understand that we need to give indie brands some grace because they don't have the same staff or the budget that some of the larger brands have. But I also think that it is still unacceptable for any brand, big, small, medium, in between, whatever the case is, to not have inclusive products, period. That That's it. And I will call out brands, whether it be an indie brand, whether it be a mainstream brand, um, that are not showcasing their products on deeper skin tones regardless. And I will also always highlight when brands make steps to rectify that and they go about responding in a positive way to people that give them negative feedback. And because of my experience with Nomad and the way in which they responded to my concern, you know, I actually went ahead and purchased the America's Parks palette. I love it. I, I really do think that it's a great, unique, new formula on the market. And that's also why I went ahead and purchased their new um, haunting you Haunted Europe palette. Because I thought the color story was really beautiful. And I wanted to test out the formula more. You know, one, one palette doesn't give you the full, the full feel for a brand. So I wanted to test this out more. So without further ado, let's dive into the video. I will be sure to leave timestamps down below so you guys can hop around if you want to. But I'm going to give you guys all of the product details, some swatches, some live swatches of the palette. And then I'm going to show you guys how I created this beautiful green look. And of course, I will end things off by letting you guys know my overall thoughts of the brand, my overall thoughts of the palette, and whether or not I think you should pick this up. So if you guys want to see how I created this look and hear my raw thoughts on the Nomad palette, just keep on watching. 
So as you guys already saw from today's intro, today I will be doing a first impressions and one look on the Nomad Cosmetics, their new palette. It's called the, it's called the Haunted Europe palette. So I'm going to walk you guys through the product details, give you all a couple of swatches and then do one look. So just to show you all, the palette arrived in this really cute silver reflective um, package. It did have the Nomad Cosmetics logo on the package. And then when you pull it out, sorry, I've already opened mine. <laughs> this is the box. Before we go into the actual box, so I do want to show you all that each Nomad palette does come with a postcard, which I think is super cute because, you know, the brand is focused around, was founded by two um, people, a, cu a couple that loves to travel. So I love that they included a super cute postmark and it has um, the name of the palette, A Haunted Europe. And then you also get a really nice personalized note that's signed, which I think is absolutely adorable. Now, let's get into the actual palette. So the palette arrives in this really, really beautiful box. And I will say that Nomad does a really good job in terms of presentation and making sure that the actual experience of receiving their product is beautiful. So a little bit of information about the palette. The website says, Haunted Europe Palette. Join us on a hunt to discover Europe's most spectacular scary tales. Intensely rich and delightfully lavish 18 shadows formulated with extra fine pigments. Nine ravishing mattes and nine picturesque shimmers inspired by the dark fairy tales of medieval Europe infused with bilberry seed oil to help restore skin for crease proof color. And 5% of the proceeds from this palette, from the sales of this palette, will be donated to the Bat Conservation International. Now, all of that information that I read to you is available on the back of the palette. And on the side here, and you probably, probably can't see it, it does say that this was made in China and it has a 12-month shelf life. So like I said, you get 9 mats and 9 shimmers. So let's just dive into the palette. Now, when you open up the box, you do get a completely different image on the palette compared to the box. So on the box, you see the actual like outline of the castle. And then on the palette, you have this really beautiful sort of holographic design that shifts two different images, which I think is so cute. And this is the back of the palette. This does not have any of the shade names or anything, but that is available on the box. But it does say that this was manufactured in China and it has a 12 month shelf life. Do you care for the expiration date of shadows? I don't know. Like that doesn't bother me at all because I definitely have some shadows that are well past the expiration date. But anyways, so this is the palette. And then once you open it up, these are the shades. Absolutely stunning. So very beautiful. So like I said, there are nine mattes and nine shimmers. So a very well balanced palette. And what I do want to highlight with this palette is that there is a ton of embossing within the shadows. Like the details that are here are so beautiful. So I'm going to swatch this palette for you guys so you guys can see all of the shades. And then we'll dive into the eye look. So for the swatches, I'm going to do the first row, then the second row, and then the third row. So here we have the first four shades. First, we have Mary King's Close, a matte spiced pumpkin. Huska Castle, Shimmery Yellow Gold, Highgate Cemetery, Shimmer Ghostly Green, Ola Bakchi Forest, I'm pronouncing that so wrong, um, which is a Shimmer Foggy Grey. So there you have the first four shades. And here we have the next four shades. So first up we have Ghost River, which is a matte Phantom Mauve, Bloody Mary, which is a Shimmer Bloody Crimson, Boogeyman, which is a Shimmer Autumn Gold, Frankenstein, which is a Matte Jack-O-Lantern Orange. Here we have the next four shades. First up we have Grendel, which is a Matte Eerie Forest Green. Then we have Big Bad Wolf, which is a Shimmer Silver Bullet Blue. Then we have Krampus, which is a Shimmer Devilish Purple.
And lastly, we have Count Dracula, which is a matte dried blood red. Here we have the next four shades. I'm gonna swatch them on the back of my hand because I'm running out of space. So first up we have Catacombs, which is a shimmer gravestone gray. Then we have Drag, Drag Shome Castle, which is a matte bat brown. Then we have Merry Cemetery, which is a shimmer gremlin green. And then we have Black Forest, which is a matte medieval blue. Not my best swatch weight, guys, so sorry. And here we have the last two shades. So first up we have Bran Castle, which is a matte ghoulish violet. And then Spando Citadel, which is a matte castle brick. Okay, so here we have all of the shades. And I will say that I am pleasantly impressed. I, I know these swatches might look a little bit janky, but the way they feel and the way that they swatched, I think it's actually really, really nice. They are quite soft, um, which I appreciate. I will say some of them felt a little bit powdery, especially the matte shades when swatching. Um, but that's not always necessarily a bad thing. And as always, we have to see when we put this on the eyes if they perform well or not. So... I immediately want to play with this green immediately okay we are we're gonna do a green look today all right so my eyelids are pretty much already prepped I'm using the Gerard cosmetics um, eye base clean and clean canvas eye base this is in the shade Coco um, if you are interested in this Malo Kenan has a code so definitely go and check her out and make sure you use her code I think you get 30% off um, for my brushes, I'm going to use the Morphe and Nikita Dragon collab because all of my other brushes are dirty. So, <laughs> this is all I have. Oh, God. I really need to wash my brushes. And these are all sort of brand new. So, hopefully they work well. The shade that's going to inspire this whole look is this matte green shade here because I think it's absolutely beautiful. Um and it's swatched so beautifully pigmented. So that's what I wanna put on my eyes. So for my transition shade, I am going to go in with this shade right here. It is Ghost River. I'm gonna use that in my crease. Now you guys can already see that that is really nice pigment. I didn't experience any patchiness or anything. So very happy with how that applied. Now this brush on the other hand, it's a little mediocre. Sorry, is that what I said? Now that I have that transition shade on, I'm gonna go into Dragon Shire, whatever it is, Castle, this deep brown here, and use that to deepen up sort of the outer part of the crease a little bit. And this is using the same brush that I did for the transition shade. And you can see how much depth that added compared to this eye. I'm really liking how those mattes blended into the crease. I think it looks absolutely beautiful. So let's go in with the star of the show, in my opinion, which is this deep, rich green. It's called Grendel. And I'm gonna use that as my sort of outer V color. The pigment. So I'm just gonna start by tapping that into the outer part. Whoa. And then I will start blending it out. Oh my gosh. That was like the tiniest dip, and look at how much pigment. Jesus, Jesus. Excuse me. Oh my gosh, I'm so excited.
you guys seeing this right i'm i'm not hallucinating do you see the amount of pigment from that one tiny dip i have not dipped back in yet and just blending that out and there's no patchiness or anything this just blended like a dream wow now i can definitely see this being an intimidating color because of the amount of pigment that you know we clearly just got but this is actually blending and diffusing really really nicely so if you are worried about it being too much pigment i do think that this has um is really easy to share out so that it's not wham bam in your face now i might be screwing everything up but i'm gonna dip my brush back in one more time pick up a little bit more pigment and do exactly what i did before tap it at the edge to really concentrate that pigment there and then start blending outwards I'm gonna do the same exact thing on this eye. Now this is just me messing up a little bit and I can go over with some concealer and clean that up, so. No worries, it's okay. It's a-okay. Now I will say that so far I have not experienced any fallout with the shadows, which is great because I already did my base. Um, so if that is the way in which you typically apply your makeup, base, face, and then eyeshadow, I don't think that you will have any issues with um, extreme fallout from this palette. So Now I think I may have went a little bit heavy on this side, so what I'm gonna try to do is to clean off my brush and then going back in with a clean brush really try to diffuse some of that color um, out so that it's not too pigmented basically I'm trying to get the eyes even so I do think that this definitely looks a lot more even now and next I'm just gonna add a lid shade so this is a very very simple look um, so for my lid, I'm going to keep it green and I'm going to go in with this green shimmer here. It's the shade Mary, Mary Cemetery. Um, I do want to try applying this with a brush before I apply it with my fingers. I like to apply my shimmer shades with my fingers because I think that's how you get the best pigment, the best impact. And I don't know if all, um, like I found that some shimmer shades just don't apply very well with a brush. But I do want to try applying it with a brush to see if it does pick up well or not. Because I know that there are some people who just don't like using their finger to put on eyeshadow. Which is fine, which is totally fair. So I'm going in with the Nikita N2. And I'm just picking up that shade on the brush, which seems to have picked up quite nicely. And then I'm just going to start by stamping that into the center of the lid and then working my way out. Maybe I don't need to use my finger. This is actually picking up quite nicely. Okay, this is absolutely beautiful. Damn it. <laughs> Why is it so pretty? Okay. So I think it applied really, really well with a brush, but I do want to try it with the fingers. So I'm just going to use my finger and apply it on this eye and see if I notice any real difference between the application. Ooh. So again, it picks up really nicely on the finger. I did create a little bit of a divot when I um, swatched this because it's a very, very soft shade. Um, so I don't know, just, I guess, be careful. Interesting. I actually feel like this went on a lot more shade with my finger than it did with the brush. I don't know if you guys can see that. But this is a nice sort of shade, like wash of color. And I feel like you can see these sparkles just kind of like pop in this, which I really like. I like this application a lot. And I feel like this is giving me a lot more pigment and definitely a lot more impact. It almost looks like it's more of a... Like this almost looks like it has no base color to it, but this does look like it has like a, a solid base. 
good. Am I making that up in my mind or can you guys tell the difference? Huh. I think both look great though, I'll say that. So I'm just gonna add, I went in with my finger into the palette again to pick up some more product. And just going back over. You know what I feel like it is? I feel like the formula of this shade in particular picks up really well on your finger when you swatch it, but then it doesn't transfer as nicely onto the eyelid. So you guys can see that I still have that pigment there. And it swatches, but when I'm trying to stamp it into the eye, it doesn't seem to be transferring over into the eye. Anyways, to make both of these eyes match, I'm gonna go back in with the brush and just um, go over that, um, that shade with the brush to give it a little bit more pigment. Okay, so I am really, really liking how these eyes are looking so far. I am very happy with this. Okay, so let's do the lower lash line. And um, I can barely speak. Anyways, for the lower lash line, I'm gonna go back in with that really nice green and then use that for the outer part of the eye. And then I think I'll take the, the brown that we used first for the inner part. Um, so, being very, very careful with that green because you guys already saw the pigment in that is crazy. I'm just sweeping that on my lower lash line. That is so pretty. Okay, change in plans. For the inner part of the um, lower lash line, I'm actually going to go in with this purple shimmer because I think it would look beautiful together and I want to try another color other than this green, I know it's a very green monochromatic look that I went for today, but let's throw a little another color in there, shall we? <laughs> That looks really pretty. Okay, so here we pretty much have the finished eye look. I'm gonna finish up the rest of my face, add some mascara, add some liner, and come back and give you guys my final thoughts. Okay guys, I'm back and this is the final look. So as always, I will have all of the product details for everything else that I'm wearing on my face down in the description box below. But I just wanted to point out that for the lip, I am wearing an oldie but goodie. I decided to go kind of vamp because this is a Halloween palette. So I'm wearing the Fenty Beauty Mademoiselle in Griselda, which I think is an old fave that everybody has in their collection. Anyways, that's not what you're all here for. Let's talk about the palette. <laughs> so... You know, this is a first impressions video. Like I said, you guys saw me swatch everything for the first time. This is the only look that I've done. But so far, I am very, very impressed. One other thing that I did do was I went in with the lightest um, green shade here as an inner corner highlight. And I actually really like it. Now, overall, I will say that this is an absolutely beautiful palette. It from everything from the packaging, which is stunning, extremely unique. It feels weighty. It feels heavy to the actual quality of the shadows, I really do appreciate. Now, they didn't swatch the best, but I will say the way they swatched, light years from the way in which they applied. The matte shadows are extremely blendable. These are the type of shadows that I like because you don't have to spend forever trying to diffuse color. And they're also quite pigmented, which I appreciate. If you have a darker skin tone like I do, um, like a lot of people do, you need to have pigmented shadows, especially when it comes to matte shadows. And I think that these are all really well, well, the ones that I used were really well pigmented. This green shade, y'all already know. What I also do appreciate about this palette, you know, after having looked at it a little bit more and played in it this one time, is that all of these shades will work for me. There aren't any shades in this palette that are super light that I think would be ashy on me or that I would not be able to use. Like, I love that this 
cream shade here would be a transition color for someone of my complexion or even slightly deeper same with these shades here i think that this is a, such a well curated palette to work for a number of skin tones and what i appreciate about this palette is i think that they curated this color story really well in such a way that it, you're able to really easily find looks and by that i mean when you look at this palette and you look at the 18 pans i well when i looked at it i saw three very clear six pan palettes if you break down each column into these two rows versus these two rows versus these two rows, I think that you find very cohesive color stories there. So if you are kind of like, how do I put looks together? I think that was a really nice way of arranging the palette so that you have these sort of very clear color stories. Definitely a more sort of bronze, brownish kind of look. You get the green and the blue row, and then you get a purple and almost like a pink morby row, which I think is such an, away, an amazing way to arrange this palette. I also do appreciate how balanced it is in that you get nine mattes and nine shimmers. Now, this is my second No Bad palette. You guys already know that um, I am relatively new to the brand. The other one that I have is the America's Parks, which is slightly smaller than this one. And so far, I am definitely impressed. This is definitely going to be an indie brand that I am checking for and will be looking forward to seeing what their future releases entail. If you guys are interested in purchasing this palette, they did actually um, run out of palettes. I think they had a really successful launch, but they did open a pre-order. So if you are interested in this palette, definitely check out the pre-order to pick this up. I do think that this is a fabulous palette for the fall and it has really, really beautiful colors just generally and the performance so far seems excellent. If you wanna see me do a couple more looks with this, I am thinking about doing three to five more looks with this palette i will definitely do that for you guys and if you have other questions about this palette please don't hesitate to reach out and let me know i will post better swatches of this on my instagram so if you're not already doing that make sure you follow me on instagram to see some better swatches and some more looks and all of that and yeah if you like this video please don't forget to hit that subscribe button, hit that like, and also leave a comment down below. All of that helps to um, help the channel essentially. And I love hearing your thoughts on my videos and if you have any suggestions, recommendations, or if you wanna see something else. Now, as always, I love you guys and I will catch you guys in my next video. Bye.